in the last stream, we were working on upgrading our Batania setup. Specifically, we were working on automating these floating entropenium flowers, which take explosions from TNT and transfer that explosive energy into mana. The reason that we needed all of the mana here is to make a staggering amount of Terra Steel, because if we want to progress forward and if we want to start working on the ultimate singularities and the ultimate ingots here, we need to get a Terra Steel B, and we also need to be able to use that Terra Steel B to produce more Terra Steel going forward. Now, between streams, I have gone ahead and gathered two Sand Bs. These are super easy. There is a Sand B DNA, and so just like we did right at the start of the pack, it's just an empty DNA and a Sand in a regular high temperature jar. And then I've also gone ahead and acquired two Creeper B Spawn Eggs. These also super easy. It is a Slime B, which we already have, and a Creeper Head. And so again, just like we've done a billion times now, I place down the Slime B, I place down the Slime B Nectar Block, I place down two Creeper Heads, which we're getting thanks to the Beheading Upgrade in our Mob Masher. And yeah, we now have two Creeper Spawn B Eggs. The idea here is that if we get ourselves one block of sand, and if we also get ourselves one Creeper B Nectar Block, which is two blocks of gunpowder, along with two slimy honeycomb blocks, which I do believe we have, we do indeed, along with, of course, the requisite bucket of honey, which again, I'm fairly certain we should be able to make, assuming we have uh, any honey at all in here, which we totally do. Boom, and let me make sure, as per usual, that this is not doing anything, it's not. Then we can go, boom, we can go, boom, 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 and we should hopefully be able to get ourselves the Creeper B Nectar Block, at which point we can get both the Creeper B and the Sand B up and running inside of one of our APOs to consistently bring in all of the gunpowder and sand that we're going to need for the continued creation of TNT, because right at the end of the last episode, the slight problem that we did run into is that we completely ran out of sand, thus stopping the production of TNT, thus stopping the production of mana and so hopefully that should no longer be a problem because we should continue to get hopefully basically on an uh, whoops we should be able to get hopefully an unlimited amount of sand and gunpowder with the bees here one thing i did not think about there but i definitely should have thought about is the fact that sand needs a block underneath it otherwise it is going to fall into the abyss sand i do believe is the nectar block for sand bees it is indeed so let's quickly try that again let me do something like this real quick and then we'll do something like this and this cool as per usual i've gotten two of each bee just to make sure that whenever there's a bee in the apiary there's another bee that is pollinating and so there's really no downtime between those bees and i'm hopeful that once this is done once we have both of these bees down here we should be able to head on back over to our mana area because we have been getting mana passively between streams because of course the sand is still coming in the gunpowder is still coming in just more slowly and so we do have the ability to make at least i think seven more terra steel right at the start of the episode here and once the tnt does start coming in i'm hopeful that we should get the mana fast enough to where we're hopefully really not too far away from getting two blocks of terra steel and so as per usual we can continue doing this to get those terra steel ingots and then what i think i'll do whilst i'm waiting for however much mana we need to get the remaining Terra Steel for those Terra Steel blocks is I'll probably go ahead and actually start doing the bee breeding and the bee creation. So we'll do the creation of this Mana Steel Bee Spawn Egg, again with the Iron Bee in the Mana Pool, easy enough. We'll do the Terra Steel Bee Spawn Egg, that is with the Mana Steel Bee and another Terrestrial Agglomeration Plate, which we should be able to make because you do make all of these runes in sets of two, and we did make them all in the last episode for our first terrestrial agglomeration plate. Although to be fair, we could also just wait until we have all of the terrestrial we're going to need from this setup, and then we could potentially just reuse this terrestrial agglomeration plate. Okay, so not too long later, actually, this all came together a lot faster than I thought it would, but I think we're basically good to go here on our 18th terrestrial. We are indeed, look at that, fantastic. And so now we should be able to go and craft those up into two blocks of terrestrial, boom, boom. Whilst we were waiting for that, again, I did get the Mana Steel Bee Spawn Eggs by putting down two Mana Pools over here with the Iron Bee and the Iron Bee Nectar Block. That was all easy enough. And so now, all we really need to do is take the Terrestrial Agglomeration Plate here. I guess a question we do have to ask is whether or not we want to have two Terra Steel Bees. I think we probably do. Let's quickly see if we don't have what it takes 
to make another terrestrial agglomeration plate. It looks like we should here. The only things we're missing are a block of mana steel and one more of these runes of mana because these are made in sets of one, not in sets of two. But that seems pretty straightforward. If we grab some iron real quick, and if we also grab one ender pearl real quick, we should be able to make another rune of mana and we should also be able to get another block of mana steel, at which point we should definitely be able to make another terrestrial agglomeration plate, which should allow us then to hopefully get uh, two terrestrial bees just to maximize the amount of terrestrial that we can produce once we have those terrestrial bees down inside of our apiary. All right, so I've moved the runic altar here over to our new mana generation setup to make sure that we have the mana to make the runes that we need. But now that we have yet another rune of mana, we can make yet another block of mana steel here and yet another terrestrial agglomeration plate. And now if we put both of those down over here, one and two, we can then collect our iron bee. We can place down, I guess, a mana steel bee nectar block is the next thing that we need, also known as a mana bee nectar block. This requires two blocks of mana steel, two iron honeycomb blocks, and some honey. Do we have any iron honeycomb blocks? We don't, we got 14 iron honeycomb. We are almost certainly producing more iron honeycomb over here. Whether or not we're gonna be able to intercept any of that is a different question. I did go ahead and add new draws, by the way, for the sand and the gunpowder. So both of those are being produced now. Uh, real quick, if I can catch some of this as it comes in, Never mind. it turns out that we uh, currently don't have an iron bee nectar block in here, and I don't think we have for quite some time. I think I took it out many episodes ago and used it for some bee breeding because we are pretty low on iron. We've got 3,500 iron compared to something like 73,000 diamonds or 73,000 copper, and these are only limited by the fact that our storage drawers are full. And so, real quick, let me rectify that. If we uh, quickly replace down this iron bee nectar block, we should finally start to get more iron combs. Not only is that gonna give us more iron, which is useful in and of itself, but it's hopefully going to allow us to get another iron honeycomb block, which we can then finally use in order to get terrestrial bees. And there we go, not too long later, boom, that's gonna get us the mana steel bee nectar block. We'll place that down over here next to the terrestrial agglomeration plates, and we'll throw down our two mana steel bees, one, and actually, I guess we don't need to throw both these down just yet. We can hold on to the other bee. The other bee is really just for the uh, the apiary, but this is gonna get us the terra steel bees. As soon as we have the terra steel bees, the terra steel bee nectar block seems pretty straightforward. This requires uh, mana steel honeycomb though. So we are gonna have to get these bees producing in one of our apiaries to get those combs to make the terra steel nectar block. But then we can also use the terra steel bee to get our first draconium bee. The Draconian Bee here is made by breeding together the Terrestrial Bee with the Enderium Bee. The Enderium Bee is an Ender Bee and a Diamond Bee. And if I'm not mistaken, I do believe we got an Ender Bee a few episodes back. Is it hanging around in here? It's not. Did I put it in here? We've got the Ender Bee Nectar Block there, but I don't see our Ender Bee. So that means our Ender Bee is either... Oh no, it isn't here. I'm blind. It's right there. Perfect. And so... We can take this, we can take a diamond bee, which I didn't think we'd have in there, that's fine, but we definitely do have over in here. So we'll steal you. Again, you can breed using the apiary breeder here, and there are also upgrades that make the breeding faster on the apiary breeder, but I still think it's just not worth it, given that the, uh, the bee box can be used to basically instantaneously uh, turn any baby bee that you breed the regular way into an adult bee. And so for us, I think we might as well just get ourselves one ender pearl dust and one diamond, the diamond we have, and the ender pearl dust we don't have, but I do believe we can get just by crushing an ender pearl over in our crushing factory. We can indeed, fantastic. That's gonna place that back, of course, into the system. So we'll take this and then over here, let's give this a try. So if I put down you and you, can I give you this? And can I give you this? I totally can. That should get us an Enderium Bee, which is gonna be useful in and of itself, but it's also gonna be useful because if we breed that Enderium Bee with our new Terrasteel Bee, that is gonna get us the Draconic Bee. Uh, for now though, let me grab that uh, Mana Steel Bee and get him in over here to continue to produce Mana Steel. Once we have enough Mana Steel Combs, we'll use those to make the Terrasteel Bee Nectar Block. And once we have the Terrasteel Bee Nectar Block, we'll use that to uh, hopefully get some Terrasteel Combs, which we can then use to make Terrasteel. I do want to basically upgrade all the apiaries. Right now we've got space for six. I do think that we can at this point in time just go ahead and request tier four apiaries. If I wanted six of these, 
we have basically everything we need. We've got all the grass that we need, all 12,000 of it. We've got all of the beeswax. We've got all of the different combs and, and whatnot. The only thing we don't have is 4,084 string. Thankfully, though, we did in a previous stream set up the wool bee. And so I think, if I'm not mistaken, we should be able to process that wool through a mechanism crusher to get string. And so if we swap this to the processing mode, I'm hopeful that we can go ahead and do something like this, where we tell it that one wool equals four string in code. And then if we place that just directly above our crushing factory over here, like so, we should have more than enough wool. We've got over 8,000. So that should be more than enough to make all of the apiaries. Let me try that one more time. If I want to make six tier four apiaries, start and start, we now don't have a CPU that's big enough. We need a CPU that has 90,000 bytes worth of capacity. And right now, our biggest is uh, 18,000. In fact, each of these has 18,000. And in fact, all four of these combined are not actually enough. The four of these combined would only be 72,000. And so we do still need to make yet more CPUs. The easiest thing for us to do here is probably, it's either gonna be to connect these up and, and, and put in like more CPU horsepower in the middle and make one big CPU. Alternatively though, at this point in time, it shouldn't really be that difficult for us to request, let's say two of these 64K ME storage components. I say that we don't have enough calculation or logic processes. That's fine. We can go ahead and make more of those using our inscribers over here. That's not gonna be tremendously difficult. And then from there, getting two 64K crafting storage units here should be fine and should give us the ability to make a big 128K CPU for really big crafts like this. And not too long later, we now have two 64K ME storage components and two crafting units to make two 64K crafting storage here. And for now, we'll go ahead and add those to one of our pre-existing crafting CPUs like this. That should form a multi-block, although actually, I think, let's not lose that, that would be bad. But I think these do have to go in a straight line. I don't think you can put them down at an angle like that. So I think if I wanted to do it, I would have to put one here like this and then one here like this, which does kind of break the symmetry a little bit, but should get the job done. So we should now have a giant crafting processor with like 140 bytes there worth of capacity. Let's give this a try. Uh, the Twitch chat is right here in that you could have kind of circumvented this by making maybe one apiary at a time or starting with lower tier apiaries and working your way up. But I see no reason not to, uh, to just try and get a big CPU start. And yeah, let's go slowly but surely start processing all of the wool into string. It's gonna start making all the different parts of the apiary and it should hopefully uh, get us six tier four apiaries that we can throw down and really start to ramp up production of all of the resources that we currently have. While we were waiting for that, we did manage to get two blocks of Man of Steel Honeycomb. And of course I put down another draw for that Man of Steel Honeycomb. I assume right now we're probably backing up because we haven't set up a draw for Man of Steel. Perfect. Back over here though, we are now, I believe, ready to go on the uh, Terra Steel Phoenix to block. Let's go ahead and start that as well. That's gonna get us what we need to get Terra Steel Combs and to automate Terra Steel, which we can then of course use to breed our Terra Steel Bee with our Enderium Bee. Now the Twitch chat has pointed out, I've actually already put too many bees in here. There are way more than nine bees in this third apiary, which is not ideal. There is, however, one spot spare in the back corner here for one more bee. So I'll throw the Terra Steel Bee down in here, start producing those Terra Steel Bee combs. He's got like a little terrestrial agglomeration plate, but at the back there, look at that. <laughs> but anyway, once we have enough, we'll then look at uh, breeding again for that Draconian Bee. One thing that the Twitch chat has pointed out that we do need to be aware of is that some bees, like the Ender Bee, do have the teleportation trait. So uh, if you click across here, it says trait Ender. Basically, if a bee has the Ender trait, apparently the uh, Draconian Bee also has this trait, it means that much like a regular Enderman, it can teleport away, which is not ideal when you're trying to keep them inside of the walls of the apiaries. Thankfully, we should be able to prevent this from happening using an Ender inhibitor here from mob grinding utilities. This thing's fairly cheap, and as it says on the tooltip, it inhibits teleportation for entities up to eight blocks away, it can be attached to any side of any solid block, right click to deactivate slash activate. So you put this down and then you just right click it. I think it's on by default. I think this is on, this is off, but hopefully if we have this down, it should prevent any teleporting bees from teleporting. And so I'm hopeful that if we put it down, maybe right about here and put all of our teleporting bees in this apiary that they shouldn't teleport away. 
and boom, there we go. All right, Terra Steel is now coming in. We have our first Terra Steel ingots coming in automatically. I've also gone ahead and set aside two blocks of Terra Steel honeycomb to allow us to make the Draconium Bee Nectar block. But now that we have the Terra Steel, if we want to breed with the Enderium Bee, we are going to have to get some Enderium. Thankfully, we did make this Enderium previously when we made our jetpack. We had to get uh, Enderium for this. We made a full stack of it. And so now that is all ready to go. Again, I did mess up here. Actually, this was supposed to be the Iron Bee, which is now here. So I do again have too many bees in this area. But for the most part, that is fine, at least for the time being, although we will move some of those out in the not so distant future. Over here, if we throw down our Terra Steel Bee, we now just need to wait because I believe that the Enderium Bee is currently hiding out in this hive, but as soon as that bee comes out, we should then be able to breed our Terra Steel Bee with that Enderium Bee, and that is gonna get us the Draconium Bee. I will make two of these Draconium Bees so that we have them when we need them for the apiaries, and from there, we also need to get an Awakened Draconium Bee. This is made using the Awakened Draconium Bee Spawn Egg and actually requires a block of Awakened Draconium. This is made using the uh, Fusion Crafting Setup from Draconic Evolution, which we'll get into as soon as we have some Draconium to actually start crafting the items that we need. For now, this is good to go, perfect. Again, we'll grab this guy real fast so that we don't end up letting him teleport away. I'll also get my other bees reset as well so that hopefully we can breed these two again right away here. And then we'll place the Draconium bees down over in here and we'll see if they do teleport away. I'm hopeful that they'll stay in that box, but if they don't, then we can potentially look at uh, other solutions. Let's quickly grab you perfect and we'll put this guy over in here as well of course we do still need to get the draconium bee nectar block that though should be pretty straightforward the draconium bee nectar block right here requires two enderium honeycombs two terrestrial honeycombs and some honey i don't believe we have any enderium honeycomb and i also don't believe that we have the enderium bee nectar block either and so i think this is a bit of a chain that we're going to have to go down because for this we need two blocks of enderium that we definitely can do thanks to all the extra enderium we made for the jet pank. And then from there, we just need two blocks of diamond honeycomb, which again, we don't have. However, uh, one suggestion that has been made by the Twitch chat is to just go ahead and throw down a lever next to our modular router to allow us to turn it off whenever we're trying to get comb. So if we did something like this and like this, and we change this to low, that should stop with the redstone signal, which it has, and that should allow us to, uh, to begin collecting the combs that kind of back up in here. And for right now, we just need the diamond combs, and then that's gonna be everything for the anterior bee nectar block, which we'll go ahead and set up in one of our new apiaries. Speaking of which, how are we doing? We're getting there. I say slowly but surely, very slowly but surely, because we're making, for the most part, a lot of oak planks, which I think is being done over in here, I have gone ahead and thrown down a bunch of acceleration cards here to, uh, to try and speed this up, but there's just a lot of crafting to be done. Once it's done all of the wood crafting though, like it's crafted 8,000 logs, it should then start crafting some of the other items here. There's not a lot of crafting to be done with these. It's mostly just the actual hives themselves. And so I'm hopeful that this should be somewhat fast. And one thing we could potentially do or could have potentially done maybe is, um, is maybe split these up. Right now we have all of these patterns in the one ME interface which is probably not ideal because it means it has to go and do all of the crafts just in this one uh, molecular assembler. Whereas if we had have spread these out between them, it might have made them a bit better. Let me try kind of hot swapping these. I don't know if hot swapping them works. How about that in there? Does that work? It does work actually, which is potentially quite useful. Basically, it's just going to allow this molecular assembler here to keep making tier one hives while these ones make the tier two, tier three, and tier four hives. Let's also take this guy out and put him in over here as well, like that. And again, that's hopefully just going to allow us to speed all of this up by not relying on the one molecular assembler to make every single part of the apiary. All right, so eventually we ended up putting the Enderium Bee down in here. Again, we are kind of overcrowding these apiaries at this point, but it does still work to the point where now we can get our Draconium Bee Nectar Block and start, and that's going to allow us to overcrowd even further here because now we can take our Draconium Bee and get those going as well. Over here, this does seem to be working. I had it on the roof and they did seem to get out. I've moved it to the back here and it seems to be doing okay. It does say up to eight blocks away. I would assume that's in each direction, but it's also possible it's just eight blocks in front of it. So just to be safe, I put it down here and it seems to be working just fine. Uh, right now we are still waiting on our apiaries though. Over here, they are being made, but they're just being made pretty slowly. We're about halfway there, I think, on 
the hives. We had about 1,500. We've got about 800 left here to be made. So there is still a bit of time uh, to go on these, unfortunately. But I guess what we could do potentially temporarily is move the ender inhibitor. It's probably going to be safer for us to pick up the bees first here if we do this and this. We could uh, take the ender inhibitor and for the time being, just so we can start getting some draconium until we can start working on uh, the draconic fusion crafting setup, we can move this over to here. Make sure it's on. Uh, place down our draconium bee nectar block down. Let's say right about here. Again, trying our best not to hit any of our bees. Let's do this. And we'll put this guy down as soon as this guy goes into the apiary. That's going to allow us to start getting the draconium combs. Again, we'll save two blocks of those because I assume that we're going to need those for the awakened draconium bee nectar block if the other pattern continues, which it totally does. And then we'll have all the rest of those uh, produce draconium for us. And we'll have those draconium ingots going into one of our compacting drawers here. And as soon as we have a couple of those coming in, we can then start looking at the draconic fusion crafting injectors here and setting up the fusion crafting core to allow us to actually start crafting items using that process and of course working towards getting the awakened draconium bee for those awakened draconium ingots and finally we do have some draconium ingots these took a lot longer to get than i was initially anticipating because it turns out in a somewhat unfortunate turn of events that the odds of getting draconium from draconium honeycomb blocks is not 100 percent you only have a 40% chance to actually get the nine draconium every time a block of draconium honeycombs comes through. Also, it seems like the draconium bees just take longer inside of the apiary. You'll see this guy's got 1,600 ticks left and none of these guys, even the ones that just come in, have got anywhere near that. And so it takes so much longer to get the draconium combs and you've only got a 40% chance of actually getting any draconium once it's through. It makes it tough. Thankfully, we do now have some, and we've also got the uh, the two blocks of honeycomb. These are easier to get because there's no chance on that, but these are coming in, and we are close on our tier four apiaries here. That should go to show you how long it took us to just get uh, any draconium coming in. These are actually pretty close to being done. The uh, crafting here suggests that it's got about one minute left. While we wait, though, if we want to actually get started with draconic evolution, we do first have to get some Fluix Steel Ingots. These are from the Lazier A2 mod, and the reason we need these, uh, not only do they unlock the Draconic Evolution quest line, but they're also required for the making of these Draconium cores. To make the Fluix Steel Ingots, we've got two options. Initially, I think we have to use the Energize Smelter here. We can put a Fluix Plated Iron Ingot into the Energize Smelter. That's gonna get us the Fluix Plated Steel. The Fluix Plated Iron Ingot is made in the Inscriber using Carbonic Fluix Dust, an Iron Ingot, and skystone dust. So do we have any skystone dust? We don't. We got some skystone blocks. Uh, do we have any iron? We do. Do we have any carbonic fluix dust? We don't. This we can make using fluix dust, coal dust, and silicon. The only thing we're missing here is coal dust, which I believe we can get by placing coal directly into our crushing factory here. And then in terms of skystone dust, this we can make by crushing skystone in the crusher. Although I don't think we can crush these skystone blocks here specifically oh but we can enrich these i see okay that's actually not too bad so if i throw this into the enrichment chamber that's going to get us regular old skystone and then we can take that regular skystone and we can run that through our crusher as well to get us some skystone dust and then back over here that should be everything to make the aforementioned carbonic fluix dust here we'll take a few of these i guess and then we'll also go ahead and craft those with the iron ingots and of course, the Skystone Dust. So let's go place all of those into one of our inscribers. We'll take you out. We'll go boom, boom, and boom. Again, unfortunately, we probably should use the uh, the end one here, actually, because it uh, has hoppers on all of the sides, whereas this one only has hoppers on the, uh, the left and on the top here, so we can only automate two of the inputs, even if we wanted to. But either way, this does get us the Fluix Plated Ingots, and then we can go ahead and enrich those over here into the Fluix Steel. Oh no, that's an energized smelter we need, which is actually this guy right here, the smelting factory. Let me put that in over there. That's gonna get us the, uh, the fluke seal. Nice, okay, cool. So that does unlock this quest line right here and in turn unlocks the ability for us to make the draconic core. Nice. Now, the bad news is that I think we're going to need quite a lot of these as we move forward. So we need to get ourselves the awakened draconian bee spawning. To get that, 
we need the awakened draconian block this requires one two three four five six seven fusion crafting injectors it also requires six more draconium cores so we need to get six draconium cores we also need seven wyvern fusion crafting injectors that being uh these guys right here to make that we need seven draconic fusion crafting injectors which are like this and you'll see that a lot of these crafts require a lot of these draconium cores and so we are almost certainly going to have to make quite a lot of this fluix steel we can make it quite a bit easier actually if we get a fluix aggregator because the fluix aggregator here just requires the pulverized coal from mechanism with the fluix dust in the iron and it goes straight to the fluix steel it kind of skips out that middleman and it crucially skips out the uh, carbonic fluix mm. dust because that requires the uh, carbonic fluix dust and the skystone dust those are the bits that make it tricky so I think ideally we would try and get this fluix aggregator here. To make this, what are we missing? We're missing quite a lot of stuff, but a lot of it seems fairly straightforward. Observers are easy enough. Molecular assemblers, I believe our system knows how to make, although to be fair, it does appear like we've already got the majority of the things that we're going to need. And so real quick, if we just do some more planks here, we should be able to get ourselves a standard Minecraft crafting table. That's going to get us yet another molecular assembler. Perfect. We then need two more Fluix pearls, also fairly straightforward, one and two, along with one Fluix logic chip and a matter condenser. So the matter condenser we've made before, super easy, and the Fluix chip here is two quartz glass along with two more of the carbonic Fluix dust. That actually seems like it should be fine. Do we have what it takes to get more quartz glass? We should be able to request it if we don't. Can I get two quartz glass? I can indeed. Fantastic. Once those are done, we're just now missing two more Fluix steel ingots. And I think at that point, we're basically good to go. We're also missing one logic processor as well. But again, that is not going to be a problem. We can take some more gold. And in fact, we might have one or two left over in here. We do. We have 21. Nice. So we just need to make two more of these Fluix steel ingots in the same way we just did. And we should be good to go. And a quick bit of sky stone. Later, we have two more fluix plated iron ingots, which we can quickly throw again into the advanced smelting factory. And with that, that should be everything for us to make the fluix logic unit. And from there should be everything for the fluix aggregator. Nice. And so now going forward, if we want to make more of these, we should be able to take just coal dust, fluix dust, and iron dust. So fluix dust, we'll take a snack. Uh, the coal dust will also take as much as we have. And then iron, we've already got 59 in our inventory. And so back over here, if I just put this down, let's say right about here for now, can I put this, this, and this in? I can. And the lovely thing about this is you can put a full stack of each thing in. And I believe if I steal these acceleration cards, I can even do this to make it even faster. You can put in up to eight of these acceleration cards, and that's going to make the fluid steel substantially faster than we were making it previously, which again is going to make it so much easier for us to actually make a bunch of these mm. draconium cores. Speaking of which, the only limiting factor now, I think, on draconium cores is going to be draconium. We've got 23, and that's because it's coming in so slowly, and we've only got that 40% chance to get it in the centrifuge. But thankfully, we are now done on this craft. And so back over here, we should have six tier four apiaries. And so hopefully, what we should be able to do now is go ahead and move those draconium bees over to here we'll probably also move a few other bees as well we'll take some more of the uh, nectar blocks and make sure we only have nine bees in each hive here we'll move some of our important bees over to wow. this area and then the good news is for this we actually don't need to worry at all about these compacting drawers anymore because all of the products that we're going to get from the tier 4 apiary are going to be in honeycomb block form by default so we can send them directly through to our centrifuges and they should just get processed all right and not too long later i have replaced every single one of our apiaries here with a tier 4 apiary so i went through and i picked up all the bees using the bee box and some of these jars and then i replaced the apiary put them all back down and now each apiary should have no more than nine different bee types within it and we moved a few of them over to here over here we've got iron we've got enderium silicon osmium sand and then of course over here we've still got our draconium it does seem as you can see, that we are having a slight issue with our draconium bee because it seems for whatever reason the endo inhibitor here isn't working. So we might have to look at using the endo beacon from resourceful bees. This is from the mod that adds the bees. And so this should work. Uh, this consumes honey, grants bee safety, prevents bees from teleporting in the affected range. The only thing that makes this tricky to make is the fact that we need to get some purple blocks. These require some popped chorus fruit, which of course requires regular chorus fruit. Then we can either get from a, uh, a chorus flower which we would probably have to go to the end to acquire. Alternatively, it looks like we can use a chorus 
honeycomb block from some kind of chorus B. For that, it's just an RGB and an end B. I actually don't know if we have the end B or not. I'm also not quite sure where we're getting slime from, but that's the second slime now that's attacked me. I'm wondering if there's some kind of uh, loophole in our mob spawning system that's causing slime bees to be able to uh, to escape. Um, either way, I'm going to put the ender inhibitor on hold for a second. Uh, for now, I'll just leave the one draconian bee in here because it seems like if they're busy, they don't really do much teleporting. It's only when there's one that's kind of not doing anything that he tends to teleport. So for now, I'll leave that there. I'll keep an eye on it though and make sure that there's always a bee in there. But we have a new issue and that issue is that we are not able now to process our honeycomb blocks anywhere near fast enough. I have gone ahead and added two more Puller Mark II modules to pull from both of these. So right now, all three of these are still sending to the draw controller. The draw controller, not strictly necessary anymore because again, these are all producing honeycomb blocks now. So we could cut out the middleman, but for the time being, the system is working fine. So we have one puller pulling from the draw controller and then we have two more pullers pulling from these two apiary storages. Again, for now, these don't actually want to be sent to the centrifuges. We're keeping these combs in our system, but you'll see now that we're not processing fast enough. Things are backlogging and that's not ideal. So the solution, of course, is to first of all upgrade these two centrifuges to elite centrifuges and then from there it's just to build more elite centrifuges if we're still not processing things fast enough so to do that just as we did before we need to get more elite centrifuge casing which is netherite redstone and regular centrifuge casing which is just the wax machine blocks which thankfully we've now taught our system how to make and I don't really think any of this should be too difficult I think there are some small efficiencies we can make to our netherite production uh, right now if we want netherite blocks obviously crafts the block that's fine but then in terms of making the netherite i think it does this craft right here where it just crafts four netherite scrap with four gold ingots and we get the netherite scrap by i think maybe smelting the ancient debris is that right it is and so right off the bat here if we instead of using the energized smelter if we use the enrichment chamber i think we can get even more netherite kind of bang for our book, because you'll see that over here, the energized smelter gives us one netherite scrap per ancient debris, whereas if we use the enrichment chamber, we get two netherite scrap from the same ancient debris. So already that's a doubling. Although I believe if we first crush the ancient debris, that gets us some dirty netherite scrap, which we can then run through the enrichment chamber. And that's gonna get us kind of triple the amount of netherite, which I think is probably well worth investing in. So uh, if we go ahead and shift right click on this pattern here, we can put it back into here we should then be able to hopefully encode the recipe over here for dirty netherite scrap, which just requires some ancient debris. Thankfully, we've got 8,000 of it now, which is perfect. We'll do this and encode. And then from there, we just need to do this. And we are going to have to get our first bit of uh, dirty scrap for that to work. Although, actually, we might be able to run that uh, through from JEI, actually, right? If I uh, come back over here, I type in dirty netherite scrap. Can I just pull this in? I can encode. Cool. That's going to go into our enrichment chamber. Right now, our enrichment chamber doesn't have an ME interface on top of it. That is fine. We can go ahead and request one. On top of that, our ME interface is currently not a factory either. That is something that we're probably going to want to rectify if we want to be able to make netherite at, at any reasonable speed. And so uh, once we have the ME interface crafted, I'll go throw that on top of the enrichment chamber. We'll throw the encoding pattern into here. We'll make sure this is set to input and output from the top. So purple like that, ultra eject is set to on. And then just like we did before, I'm gonna go ahead and make the uh, tier one and tier two installers to allow us to upgrade this from a regular enrichment chamber up to an enriching factory. And there we go, we now have an advanced enriching factory, uh, which already had the speed and energy upgrades in it. And so now back over here, let's see if I want to upgrade my centrifuges. We need quite a lot of elite centrifuge casing. And so we do already have uh, 80 netherite blocks in here. I see we've got 74 of them right there. But let me request like another 100 of these. And you'll see it's hopefully gonna use quite a bit less of the ancient debris this time around. But hopefully it should also be quite fast as well over here. I'm hopeful that uh, if we turn auto assault on, that's gonna send all those dirty netherite scraps through and kind of process all that down. Nice. No, this is good. Cool. So we'll let that do its thing. And then, of course, over here, we do still have our Niotic Energizing Rods, which are going to allow us to uh, very quickly and easily throw that casing together, uh, just in the same way we did before. Let's go ahead and also request yet more 
of these uh, waxed machine blocks. Again, give me a hundred of those. Those should come in nice and quickly. We do have the option, I guess, at that point of also looking at upgrading our reactor and potentially upgrading our energizing rods as well. The only reason I mentioned that is again, going back to this uh, fusion crafting, the fusion crafting is usually quite expensive on the power front. You'll see this craft right here uses 50 million redstone flux. Again, OP is another power unit that's equivalent to RF or FE. And so we do need a lot of power to make this happen. 50 million is not staggering. We do have almost 10 million in here, but it's probably well worth investing in a higher tier reactor, especially given that it's not going to be that difficult for us to do. Right now, we do just have these Niotic rods. However, as we saw from before, going up to Spirited shouldn't be too difficult. This does require emeralds, which I think thus far we have managed to kind of fully avoid in the pack. Emerald bees, I think, are not going to be too difficult for us to get. This is one that we can breed together with a diamond bee and an RGB, both of which we have. And then the emerald bee nectar block is just an RGB honeycomb, of which we have a ton, and a diamond bee honeycomb, which we can, of course, get very quickly, like we did earlier in the episode. And so I do think an emerald bee is potentially worth investing in, although we could also try and jump straight up to the nitro tier, which is the final tier here. This, of course, requires some nitro crystals. These are made using nether stars, blocks of redstone, and blocks of blazing crystal. Blazing crystal being the, uh, the ones we made before with blaze rods or blaze powder. Uh, these require 20 million FE per 10 nitro crystals, but they do make for staggeringly powerful uh, energizing rods and a staggeringly powerful reactor as well. If I go and uh, check the current reactor, this has a generation factor of 840 FE per tick. The Nitro version has a generation factor of 5,400 FE per tick. So a massive increase in the amount of RF per tick that we could generate, and then also a massive increase in the amount of RF per tick that we can kind of pump through our energizing rods into the energizing orb to make things much, much faster. If we wanted to make the Nitro reactor, we'd need 36 of these nitro casings, which means nine lots of this recipe, which means again, we need 36 nitro capacitors. Uh, 36 multiplied by four is 144 nitro crystals. Of course, divide that by 10. We need to do this recipe 15 times, which is really not that bad, at least from a resource perspective. We've got 13,000 nether stars, which is completely fine. So taking 15 nether stars out is not going to be a problem. On top of that, getting 15 blocks of redstone also not going to be a problem whatsoever. And then finally, the blazing crystals shouldn't be too difficult. We do have 92 blazing crystals in here. And so that's already seven blocks, sorry, 10 blocks of blazing crystals. And so really, we just have to take some of our blaze rods out here and make sure that we put those into the right modular router here. Let me go ahead and uh, actually, I guess, take those out. And then let's also go ahead and take everything else out of here for the time being. Oh, and also let's take those out as well. That makes sense. There we go. If I put you in there, is that going to work? It is. Cool. And if I take this out of here, that's also going to work. Nice. And so it really shouldn't take us too long to get 15 blocks of blazing crystal, at which point we can uh, hopefully just kind of let this thing work on its own in the background to get us all of the uh, 144 nitro crystals that we need. And at that point, we can do a big jump up to the nitro reactor. We can also look at doing a big jump up to the nitro energizing rods, although that one might be a little bit trickier because I do think with that one, you've got to go through the previous tiers. So we won't be able to skip with that. We're going to have to go through Spirited, which means we are going to have to get the Emerald B. Again, not that that's really a bad thing because we do also have to get the Emerald B to finish the pack because there is an Emerald Singularity required to make the ultimate singularity. I think we basically need every B in the game. I don't think there's any B that we don't need. And so what I'll do, I'll uh, quickly get the remaining blocks of Blazing Crystal. We'll then set this going to allow us to, to start making the nitro crystals and whilst we're waiting for the nitro crystals to come in i'll go ahead and breed together an emerald b craft up the emerald b nectar block and get it set up in one of these new tier 4 apiaries all right and again not too long later actually we do now have two emerald bees and the emerald b nectar block none of that was too difficult in the time it took me to do that we've almost got one nitro crystal which is not ideal we definitely do want these coming in faster and so i think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and take out all of these and we will, we will go ahead and add this to the whitelist here. Again, if I press N, we can put this in like so. So we've got 10 nitro crystals, which is good. But I think what we probably want to do first here is maybe push some of those emerald combs to the front of the queue. So we'll go and like kind of whack these in like this, and we'll put these back in over here for now. And as soon as we get some of those emeralds, we can then start using those, of course, as soon as we do give them a compacting draw, so the whole system doesn't get clogged. Let me go ahead and 
See if I can't make another one of these. We totally can, lovely. Let me put that down with my draw key, which apparently I've put in the system. That's also fine. Let's do one of these. And let's do one of these. Cool. So this is going to go in here. And what we'll do instead, I think, is we will take our emeralds and we'll use those over in here to uh, to make the spirited crystals. And then we'll use those spirited crystals to upgrade our energizing rods. Although I do think the reactor is probably the first thing that we want to upgrade because I think, as you can see, the power is going down quite quickly here. We can make it a little bit more efficient. There's a few things we can do. We can reinstate the redstone and coal. Right now, it's not got any in here. And the Twitch chat did also make a, a shrewd observation that you can actually put ether gas in here. So if I take the bucket of water out, water as a fluid does cool the reactor down and thus allows it to make more power, but the ether gas is even more powerful. It says negative 50 degrees Celsius here. And so if we uh, quickly grab a bucket of ether gas, which we should have multiple of over here, we can then place that into this reactor, which should hopefully give it a nice little boost to the amount of power that it's producing. I don't think it's gonna be staggering, by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm hopeful that it's a little faster than it was previously. And over here, again, if we just add the spirited crystal to the whitelist, that's gonna start making those spirited crystals. It looks like it is kind of holding steady, even when this is on, which is good. And then we might potentially have to concede that we have to upgrade the reactor to either niotic or spirited before we can go all the way to nitro, just from a, uh, just from a time standpoint. So while we wait for those spirited crystals to come in, because they are still going to take a little while here, let's pivot back over to this infusion crafting and see if we can't get a, a head start on this. So one of the first things that we're going to need, if we head back to the Draconic Evolution questline here, we are going to need a fusion crafting core. This guy here is pretty straightforward. It needs four blocks of lapis baluli, uh, four diamonds and one draconium core. All of that we have. Cool. And then from there, depending on what craft we want to do, we need different tiers of these infusion crafting injectors. We do have to start with the basics. And again, the main thing that we're kind of working towards here is the awakened draconium blocks. We can make our awakened draconium B. And so I think we can kind of shoot for seven crafting injectors. So no matter what, we do have to start with seven of the draconium fusion crafting injectors and work our way up from there. So for that, we're going to need seven more of these draconium cores. Thankfully, these are now easier for us to make, although annoyingly, we are missing just one here. Uh, we need coal dust, flux dust, and iron. I really thought we made more ingots than that, but I guess not. That's fine. Uh, flux dust, we have got a stack of. That's good. Coal, we do not have a stack of, but we can make it. And then iron, we are gaining more and more. We've doubled the amount of iron that we had since the start of the stream, which is fantastic. And so back over here, the crusher can work on some coal. And then we can take all of that, of course. And uh, oh, of course, we just left it in here. All right, I see. That's fine. Never mind. Back over here. Let's do something like this and like this. Perfect. And then from there, I believe we should have everything to make seven draconium fusion crafting injectors. These do all require power to the point where we're going to want to get some more flux points, specifically seven more, ideally here. Uh, again, thankfully, these are not at all difficult for us to make at this point. Let me get another stack of flux cores, and then let's see if we can't make two, three, four, five, six, seven of these injectors. And it's probably worth grabbing our flux configurator just to make uh, configuring those a little bit easier. So now we'll set this up over, actually, I'm gonna set this up over this side of the base. We'll put it down like right here, because I think this is fine. Let's put it down right about here. And then we have to put these seven fusion crafting injectors. I want to say approximately two blocks away like this. It might be exactly two blocks away like this, but if we put all of these down like so in here, we can now use these to complete certain fusion crafting crafts. For example, let's say that we want to upgrade these. because I think that is kind of the first thing we want to do. I think we want to upgrade them to the Wyvern fusion crafting injectors because those are going to allow us to make the awakened draconium block. You know which tier you require by the word at the top. So this says Wyvern, it means we need the Wyvern Fusion Crafting Injectors. In order to make the Wyvern Fusion Crafting Injectors, you'll see that it says Draconium, which means you just need the Draconium tier. So in order to make these, we do first need to make one more of the Draconic Fusion Crafting Injectors. That is hopefully gonna be completely fine. One of these and boom. And then to upgrade each one, we need four diamonds, two draconium cores, one block of draconium, and one wyvern core. The wyvern core here requiring four draconium cores, a nether star, and a draconium. So we need like 14 of these right off the bat. That's just what we need to do any upgrades we wanted initially. That's just like these two here multiplied by seven. Then 
we need a further 28 of them to make seven of these wyvern cores. We should have what it takes here. We might be a little low on the, uh, the Fluix ingot. Oh, bang on, nice, cool. So in that case, can I do this and this? I can, nice, we have enough nether stars. And thankfully now the draconium is coming in faster thanks to those uh, tier four apiaries. And at that point, we just need seven blocks of draconium, which we should also be able to get. And we of course need a bunch of diamonds as well. And so now back over here, if we take our crafting ejector, this is what we're upgrading. And you'll see over here, this goes in the middle. So this is gonna go inside of here like this. And right now it says no valid recipe. That's because we need to put diamonds and the other items here onto these crafting injectors. Now you'll see right now in the bottom right is a stack mode. I'm gonna shift right click these into single item mode. If you leave it in stack mode, it will just take a full stack of diamonds, which can be useful for certain crafts, but for us, I don't think it's gonna be particularly useful here. Instead, I want to do one, two, three, four diamonds, one block of draconium, Oh, wait, we need more here. This is uh, an eight infusion crafting injector recipe. Okay, so I need this guy down and then I need to go make another one because we need eight uh, crafting injectors to upgrade from draconium to wyvern. So let's put you in here. And now we should be able to put down two draconium cores, one and two, and one wyvern core like this. Uh, of course, that does mean that we need one more flux point as well. Let's go ahead and grab one of these. And of course we can configure that again with our flux configurator, boom and boom. But now in here, you'll see that it says craft. And if you click craft, it's gonna start charging up. It's gonna pull power from all of these power points. I will disable limit, although I don't think disabling limit here is actually going to matter at all. And I'll paste that to, uh, to all of these. I don't think the power limit does matter. I think it's, uh, it just takes a second for this to actually complete. Once it gets to 100% charging, it's then gonna start crafting. And again, it does take a couple of seconds for the crafting to take place as well. There we go. And once the crafting is done, thankfully the crafting does appear to be a little bit faster than the charging here, we should get a Wyvern Fusion Crafting Injector. And essentially we need to do that seven more times because we need seven of these Wyvern Fusion Crafting Injectors to make the Awakened Draconium. Thankfully what we can do now though, is take this out. We can replace one of our pre-existing injectors like this and higher tier fusion crafting injectors can be used for lower tier crafts. And so now if we want to do the same recipe again, you can click in like this by the way, which is actually a lot faster than what I was doing. And we can click craft again. And that's gonna do the same thing for a second time. And then we can kind of keep going, replacing the draconic fusion crafting injectors with the wyvern fusion crafting injectors until we have enough of them to make this awakened draconian block. At which point we're then gonna to have to go and get a dragon heart, which we acquire by killing the end dragon, which I think should be fairly straightforward given our creative flight and given the power of some of our Tinker's weaponry that we can make. And not too long later, we're done. We have seven of these Wyvern Fusion Crafting Injectors. We could upgrade the last one or the last two that we have here, but it's not necessary. We've got three, four, five, six, seven, and that is all that we need for the Awakened Draconium blocks here. And so now it's just a case of going and fighting the dragon to get that heart. Bank over here though, this is chugging along, but we've only got uh, 62 of these crystals, 63, I guess but uh, we need 144 of them. And so I think one of the first things that we should do is we should go ahead and take these energizing rods and upgrade them from Niotic to Spirited because right now we've got five of them. They can move 700 RF per tick each, which is a total of uh, 3,500 redstone flux per tick that they can move total, which is less than the reactor can produce. If we upgrade them to the Spirited, energizing rods that's going to increase each energizing rods uh, max input and output to 1200 rf per tick which is 6000 total which is still less than our reactor can currently do one two three four and five nice and so this should be almost twice as fast not quite twice as fast we're going from 700 to 1200 not to 1400 but it should be able to make these a heck of a lot quicker than we were making them previously which in the long run i think is going to be well worth it. So we'll leave this going. Next time we'll come back, we should have enough of the Spirited Crystals to upgrade our reactor to Spirited, and then we can use that if we wanted to, to push forward into Nitro. Although uh, what I'll probably do is between streams, I will uh, go ahead and craft up some more of these casings. Again, we've got 
the netherite that should have come in by now. How much have we got? We have 176 blocks there. And uh, we also have the, um, the, the honey casing as well in order to make the regular centrifuge casing. So between streams, I'll go ahead and I'll, uh, I'll upgrade both of these to the higher tier centrifuge. And we'll also potentially look at making more of those as well if needs be. Next time we'll upgrade the reactor. And I think next time we'll also start looking at this extended crafting. I think we'll look at getting some quantum compressors. We'll look at getting the ultimate crafting table. We'll look at starting the process of making all of these singularities. We'll also go through and start making just even more bees. It's going to be quite the episode. We're going to have to make just even more apiaries, which I'll probably also set going, actually. Uh, let me see. If we go and request that, if I want more tier 4 apiaries, let's say I want another six. If I want to double what we have, we're missing combs, interestingly enough. We just need more combs. Is that because of a crafting conflict? Because we've got 8,000 wood combs. It did say specifically that it wanted gold combs, which is surprising. I wonder if we've got like a mistake somewhere where it thinks it needs gold combs or it doesn't need gold combs. I'll have to take a look. But either way, we'll go ahead and request some more apiaries. We'll build those out so we can make room for all the extra bees that we're going to need. We'll look at getting the uh, the quantum compressors and whatnot up and running so we can make those singularities. And we'll, of course, look at fighting the end dragon at some point in the not-so-distant future so we can get that awakened draconian bee, which, of course, is one of the bees required for all of those singularities. But, of course, all of those are problems for future Isaac. For now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of Sky Bees 2. There.